That was a lie. <laughs> that was a big lie. Hunter X Hunter episode 86. Back into hell. No. <laughs> Sorry. No. You can maybe save Kite as a decoration, which is what he currently is for Neferpitu. How do you feel about heads in a jar? So as often happens, something came up that was related to something I was trying to say about their retreat last time. I had watched a movie called Twilight Samurai, which I enjoyed, and then I found out it was part of a trilogy, uh, I think the next of which is called The Hidden Blade. And in watching a trailer for that movie, I heard a quote that was something like, the body retreats, the spirit advances, or the body retreats while the spirit does not. Leaving a terrible situation, abandoning something, changing course, is not not really a defeat unless it totally annihilates your spirit and is like the end of the road. Otherwise, it's just a pivot. It's a redirection based on new information. It's strategy. I mean, obviously for Kalua in that moment, there was a bit of an existential crisis, but it's only the end if he lets that be the end. If it totally destroys him internally, emotionally, his motivation. That's what was so critical about what Gon was saying. Gon was the spirit in that situation. To the hunter's criticism, I guess there are multiple ways you can read it, but Kalua leaving itself wasn't an issue. It, it was a good move. The question is just like, what do they do now? That will be the test of whether or not it was defeat or if it was cowardly, etc. And I think that's true for life as well on a daily basis. Abandoning a current course of action for another course of action is not defeat. It's probably progress. If everything else internally is sound and kept in check. Promise X and X reunion. So does this begin the training? NGL ni modoru ni wa I'm still not 100% clear on what this is. They have to like fight assassins. This is so, so, so Netero. Kalua costume change again. Okay, <laughs> sure, let's just do it. Whatever. We play Netero's game. Can't quite explain what this is, but I have this like nagging feeling uh, watching them take on these two assassins, this quest, that there's a more pressing matter out there somewhere in the world, maybe something humanity annihilating, but it's just not coming to me, so we just gotta go with it, I guess. How, how, do, we, how do we focus on the assassin side quest when... Ants! Ants! She feels like something out of Mob Psycho. For an assassin, she doesn't exactly blend in. Everyone recoiling in horror at her smell, presumably. Oh, it's starting to add up. <laughs> Maybe lay off. Would you like a little coffee with your sugar? Though admittedly, she's kind of doing what I always want to do, but feel too embarrassed to do. Love advice with this lady. Is this what you wanted, Netero? Amazed that she could just drink that without chewing. Take notes, boys. Oh, so we're kind of in the same boat here? You gotta kill two children. Oh, she's got some strong nen. She's a coffee divination. So she's here to provide support and guidance. We do not have a month, man. <laughs> Come on. Like I've said, I've, I get the reasoning. You can't have a lot of strong people showing up and losing. But like, if you don't finish this fast, like real fast, nothing matters. Then again, I was highly critical of the Hunter exam. Thought it was completely absurd. And then episode by episode, I'm continuously proved wrong. <laughs> like, it was exactly what they needed. So, sure, assassin duel to defeat the ants. Netero's crazy, but he's not a fool. Also, don't ask me why. Palm is someone I feel like I would really get along with. She's so familiar to me. I feel like I've met her archetype before. A little bit nutty, <laughs> but decent, which is fine. <laughs> You are the gatekeepers for Gon and Glua's ant revenge. Okay, they could have just played it safe and played defense, but not Knuckle. He's got a big personality. 
<laughs> I mean, something tells me he's not going to stop with the megaphone. Okay, again, like, credit to Gon and Klua. I think one of their greatest psychological skills is the ability to compartmentalize and look at one task at a time. They're always so, so, like, just whatever is in front of them, that's all they're focusing on and doing. I would not be able to function, or I would be functioning at an unbelievably high rate of anxiety, thinking about and imagining what was transpiring in the hellhole formerly known as the NGL. I would wake up in a cold sweat every night after nightmares of ne Neferpitu. Something really old school and cool about his design. Seems like sound reasoning. Yeah, it's so much of Nen, just knowledge of your opponent. Huh. That's an interesting way to look at it. Trying to make this applicable to more than just Nen combat. Kalu is not wrong. He makes some great points and he's a great strategist and he will be victorious a lot of the time because of that. One thing I like about what Gon just said though is I think if it's a choice between trying to figure out the circumstance exactly or trying to understand things perfectly or putting focus on the external or circumstantial or things outside of your control versus something that undoubtedly makes you better and you stronger that is actionable within your control. The thing that improves your life in a systemic way permanently is probably going to be the right choice and more useful. Though conceptually you could do both. And that applies not just to victory in one specific task, but just as like a, a mental framework. Typically the more dependent you make your choices and the outcome of your life based on things that are out of your control, the weaker of a position you're in. Even though for sure knowledge of the outside, other people, the world is useful information to inform what you do. A very straightforward example would be like never weaken your position or sacrifice something you cherish solely for the hope of a reaction from someone else. Because in that situation, you are certainly weakening yourself, but the reaction is not in your control and undetermined. You may end up weakening yourself and not getting what you want anyway. Or you get what you want, but you've now made yourself weaker and you are now in a worse position to pursue subsequent things that you want. I think a really, really cool place to be is when you are assured that you, by yourself, within reason of course, are able to get the things you most need and want. That is an extremely powerful point of leverage with the world. <laughs> um, wow. Wow. Whoa, I did not expect her so soon. This is awesome. Yes. Slaughter, you say. This is looking like she grew, even though this is not her real form. Oh man, it feels good. It feels so good. And Gon's like, a week. Who's gonna tell him? Oh no, oh no, did they... They reassembled him for eating or something? Speaking of... Are they gonna bring him back? Well, I was right about the decoration thing, but maybe there's hope. Maybe... Well, I, I dare not dream. I've been there. I'll do it. I'll tell myself, like, I'm gonna do this month's worth of work in a week. And I think sometimes it's good because it just makes things happen. And I believe that unless you're actually really good at being a perfectionist who practices perfectionism instead of just getting stalled out and ruminating in circles, the perfect is the enemy of the good. But the critical thing there is that non-perfection does not equal death. Like, it can't mean a game over event. Yeah, she loves him. Thanks, Mom. The love triangle continues. Because they are. Just keep very methodical in her training. Very wax on, wax off. Not so sure he was a decoy. Alright, he's a good guy. Good guy confirmed. Knew it. And he cares about the parks. Maybe he can be the new leader of NGL. Finally! Yeah, restoration. Deep tissue massage. And Sailor Moon!
who I've heard the author is married married to, the author of which... That was a lot of clothing for a Sailor Sailor Moon transformation. She also has some kind of fortune telling thing. My girl's stressed. Or like highly caffeinated. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I love the neuroticism. I feel it in my veins. Okay, that part not as relatable, but... It's funny that you think you could take Bisky. <laughs> yeah, kill them! Man, that Bisky is hella useful for support. After Bisky, how could you ever train without Bisky? I'm concerned what's happening inside Palm. Yeah, speaking of game over events. You're starting to understand. Alright, it's time to put your money where your mouth is, because I seem to recall in an episode long, long ago, you saying something about how it doesn't matter what strength levels are. So let's see it. He was once number one. Why don't you start with Nefer P2? Let's see how that goes. Are these guys like a Nen tag team? Is this a Jujutsu Kaisen reference? <laughs> but like, in reverse? It's terrifying. She's got like that, that deadly, destructive, playful force of a toddler with godlike power. Oh, is this a, a new one? Another one? Royal Guard? Uh, I was born 30 seconds ago. There he is. Shia Poof. Oh, why? <laughs> why are you doing? Menthuthu. What? <laughs> Bentholiopi? Menthuthuopi. Menthuthuopi. Okay. Nyaru Hodo. The world is new and exciting for the murderous anime cat girl. Okay. Okay, I don't... I don't know. Uh, okay. We'll see. Palm just has one of those faces that you trust. Also kind of cool that, like, we had the whole game training arc and Bisky never once used her healing thing. She just let them will themselves through it, giving them the maximally hard road at all times. Maybe they actually can save Kaido. I, mean, I don't know. Seems unclear. Nefer Pito has something cooking. I like don't trust it yet. I'm half expecting evil zombie kite. Meanwhile, while Gon and Glue are getting slightly stronger, the ant forces have just tripled in power pretty much. Honestly, I would be shocked if Netero and the other two, or at least two thirds of them, aren't just wiped out here. They came in completely underestimating, but maybe I'm not giving them enough credit. There would be a terrible irony in that too. Netero thinking we can't send too many strong people because anybody who fails will feed the ants power and then they fail. Feeding the ants power. I can feel just like watching myself in Internally. This episode was an interesting turnaround from like the most bleak ending possible to Bisky <laughs> and suddenly hope and happiness. Speaking of light, Bisky just a ray of sunshine in very, very dark times. Pom also weird, weird character, but I kind of love her. I'm trying to figure out why that is. Maybe it, it's a personal problem psychologically, <laughs> but I trust her. I feel like maybe we have similar motivations and, and dispositions.